quickly take you through our very exciting story uh, and then take a few questions, but also um, ensure that you know that um, Gilbert can connect you with our CEO directly uh, to take any one-on-one -on -one questions and conversations that you would like to have um, after you hear um, my presentation. So thank you once again. Um, our team, uh, it's an exciting story, does start literally with our team. Um, we are Mongolia's first uh, lithium brine explorer and developer with the largest exploration license that was ever granted, but it all starts with um, a team that has a collective over 150 years of uh, mining, capital markets, and in-country in Mongolia experience. Very well respected. Um, they have been able to bring other success stories online, uh, as well as having been part of sizable exits. Um, I, our chairman is a geologist uh, by trade and was instrumental and essentially uh, in the exit of Hunu Pol um, that was sold for um, approximately half a billion Australian dollars in 2012. He is the co-founder of Ion Energy with our CEO and director Ali Haji. They happen to be in Mongolia on another project in 2017. They had the vision to see that our world was and is currently experiencing the green revolution and the shift away from fossil fuels. And while on that trip, took some time uh, to identify some potential opportunities in the battery metal space and very specifically um, identifying lithium exploration and development as an opportunity. They started discussions with the Mongolian government and because of their past successes in history and working in country for an extended period of time, they had those strong relationships and the trust with the Mongolian government to continue to explore this opportunity. And that's where the ION story was uh, started. Now, Mongolia, some of you may be familiar with Mongolia as a jurisdiction. Um, it is still very untapped and undervalued, frankly, in terms of its potential for battery metals. Um, the economic growth in Mongolia has con continued to accelerate. It is very much considered an emerging mining jurisdiction. I should say an emerging economy and a very well-established mining jurisdiction at this point, given how much of its economy is dependent on the mining sector. And as we know from recent news that uh, many of the global mining giants have made sizable commitments to uh, their strategic partnerships and their assets to show that they believe Mongolia has long-term viability and potential. Uh, lots of opportunity there. And of course, um, if you uh, are aware with the changes and how new their democracy is, um, very investor friendly, uh, very young, highly educated government um, officials and representatives, and they've spent a lot of time thinking and making commitments towards growing technology hubs, modernizing their regulations to ensure that it is an investor-friendly and mining-friendly environment uh, for international investors. Our Mongolian advantage, uh, I've talked to you a little bit about our team and the vast mining and exploration experience that we do have. And we have seasoned Mongolian nationals on the team. I spoke a little bit about our in-country uh, trust and strength of our relationships. 
I think that's very important in terms of um, our philosophy, our core values. Um, before we even went in to start our exploration efforts, we had spent a good three years in the local community. We've appointed a local community representative. We have regular meetings and have ensured that we continue to enjoy the trust of Mongolian government officials, both at the local and at the national level. And we have also partnered with the Mongolian University of Science and Technology. As the, um, as the first mover, frankly, for uh, within Mongolia on lithium brine. Our first exploration, our flagship site is over 81,000 hectares um, and is uh, the largest exploration license that was ever granted. Uh, in 2017, when Ali and the chair of our board uh, Matthew Wood, were in Mongolia looking at potential opportunities. Um, they were able to look at um, previous very preliminary drilling that had taken place and of course looked highly encouraging. Um, and that's what helped us embark on um, this value, this particular asset. Um, it is lithium brine versus hard rock. Um, and being in the South Gobi Desert, um, great environment and atmosphere, both in having um, pretty much every single day of the year is sunny, uh, which allows for high evaporation rates and low precipitation. And uh, strategically, uh, our asset is 24 kilometers from the Chinese border. We've had some maiden drilling results that came in almost a year ago, and we made a new lithium discovery in uh, White Wolf Prospect. Um, and you can see on the screen some of the results. But we also made a new copper and nickel discovery at the Bavayul site. Um, and that's very important to ION's uh, value proposition. Uh, being first mover on the lithium brine front within Mongolia, we also uh, hope to play, be a key player on uh, the Asian supply chain hub um, uh, across all battery metals, having seen and discovered this co these copper and significant copper and nickel anomalies. And that um, resulted in us embarking on a strategic our alliance with Arangin Resources, which is an emerging copper company. Now, our second asset is over 29,000 hectares, Urga Kanaran, which means rising sun. Um, we have made a significant brine discovery in our maiden exploration efforts during the drilling efforts. Um, in fact, uh, at 99, 118 milligrams per liter of lithium brine. Not only is it, uh, generally speaking, an exceptional early result, but the highest grade ever known to be found within Mongolia. So we're pretty excited. We continue uh, our exploration work on this asset, have found uh, low resistivity zones, um, and we are hoping to have inferred um, resources released with, uh, by Q1 of 2023. I know that we will be sharing, those are pictures from our site. Our CEO and our technical advisors were able to make the first site visit this year in April, uh, post pandemic, and then went, visited again at the end of September with some potential strategic partners. And in fact, one of our uh, senior technical advisors, Don Haynes, who's world renowned and involved with uh, many other successful lithium projects globally, uh, has been on site this week as well to help further our exploration efforts uh, with the prospect of having our uh, inferred resource 
in early 2023. Here are some more pictures from the site. Diamond core drilling uh, has already commenced. So I've spoken a little bit about why Ion Energy's sites are strategic geographically, um, the close proximity to the largest consumer uh, of electric vehicles, but also the largest refiner and manufacturer of batteries globally. Um, it is a low cost and year round operating environment, once again, because of the climate in the South Gobi Desert um, and a strong location advantage. Uh, for those of you that uh, continue to make decisions based on um, sustainability practices, um, ha being so close to um, the Chinese border means that there's a reduced carbon footprint versus our um, South American peers that have to ship um, the raw materials to Asia. I spoke a little bit about our Battery Metals Strategic Alliance. I know I'm, I'm looking at our time as well and wanna make sure that I tell you a bit more about our exciting story. Um, as you can see from this slide, um, we uh, have a sizable amount um, of not only management and inside ownership, but of in-country Mongolian investors. We're very proud of that sense of ownership um, and every decision that we make, including um, putting all of our money uh, towards our exploration efforts. Um, and and uh, if you look at our timelines, it has been a very rapid succession from the founding story in 2017 to today and the acquisition of two very exciting assets. Um, we started trading our shares publicly on the venture Toronto Venture Exchange in 2020, just a little over two years ago. And here are some of the great milestones um, that we have been able to hit. Um, you will see uh, mention of our discoveries as well as the exploration efforts. Um, and we are working towards an early resource indication for Q1 2023, as opposed to this chart um, and hope to have measured and inferred by Q2 2023, a scoping study by Q3 and um, a PFS pre-feasibility study by Q4. So 2023 is gonna be an even more exciting and fast paced year for our team. Um, you can look at some of the comparables and what our research analysts have said. Um, there is no doubt that the demand keeps rising for a strategic battery metal, a critical battery metal such as lithium. Um, and we believe we're well poised for that. Um, here are our costs and um, our advantage versus our peers within the same space. And I think it's really important. Uh, one thing I didn't touch on in terms of our value proposition, I talked to you about how our team is very invested literally um, in the ION story and our value proposition um, and how responsible we've been um, with potentially your money as a shareholder, um, but our assets. And we've been able to ensure that we are fully funded um, until the point of finding an inferred resource. And once again, we have focused all of our efforts, um, time and money um, and expertise on moving ahead rapidly on our exploration efforts to achieve that. Uh, we are also, as I alluded to about our September um, site visit, 
uh, actively engaged and looking to make strategic partnerships. Um, we have always said since the beginning of our story that um, we know what our expertise is, and that's in identifying um, really valuable assets um, that are viable, that have highly encouraging resources. Um, but we are looking to others that already have the expertise around bringing our assets online and uh, bringing it into production. Now, as I mentioned, thank you for uh, humoring me through this presentation as it was a last minute switch. I hope I've given you a taste um, of uh, where Ion Energy came from, where we're going and how excited we are for 2023 um, and having over 110,000 hectares worth of um, significant lithium brine resources. Um, but uh, if you are interested in connecting one-on-one -on -one with our chief executive officer, I know that Gilbert and his team will be sharing these slides afterwards. His contact information is on the uh, screen, and I highly encourage you to reach out. We would love to spend more time talking about what's in store in the coming months. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Saloni. So maybe just in time to uh, answer one question uh, because we're running out of time a bit uh, behind. So just one question here from the audience here uh, among a few others. Uh, Senior M is asking, uh, Livium company stocks perform reasonably well mostly in the past few years. So how come Ion Energy is not really follow that trend? Is it because of a Mon Mongolia discount? That's a great question. Um, and yes, I think that's the simplest way to put it. There is no doubt uh, that we have so many advantages. We're getting great results, great early results. Um, and uh, one of the, and you may have noticed that from uh, how much Mongolian content there is in our presentation, um, we think it's very important to highlight the value proposition of Mongolia as a destination. Um, and let's face it, Rio Tinto and some of the other global giants have helped bring that awareness, but that is definitely part of it. And it's also timing. Uh, we've quickly done things. We continue to try to share our story as publicly as possible, but we are a junior early stage explorer that has achieved a lot since uh, coming online um, in the last couple of years through a pandemic. Um, and uh, we believe um, that we have the right story and the right investment proposition. Um, and we believe that we are undervalued right now for that reason, as well as the Thank you, Siloni. I need to let you go. And uh, thank you very much for sharing your story with us here today. Thank you.